The Sustainable Development Goals are a collection of 17 interlinked global goals designed to be a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. They were set up in 2015 by the United Nations and are intended to be achieved by the year 2030. Now, have you noticed something strange about Sustainable Development Goal number 18? Now, of course, you haven't noticed anything because there is no Sustainable Development Goal number 18. But perhaps there should be. For decades, we have polluted our oceans with plastic. We failed to see the long-term effects plastic consumption could have on our oceans. Now, in the same way we polluted our oceans, we are polluting our orbits in outer space. Now, not with plastic, of course, but with leftovers from satellites and launcher systems. Now, if we don't do something about this, the amount of debris will keep on growing up to a point that it will frequently start to crash into our satellites and space stations. Now, this means we will no longer be able to use GPS, satellite TV, weather forecasting, self-driving cars, and even the internet itself as we know will not be the same anymore as satellites help to connect 49% of the world's unconnected population. Now, the reason as to why this space debris is growing exponentially is because of the enormous amount of increase in space activity around the globe. The new space economy is booming business, and we are in a technology space race which might be bigger as we have ever known on Earth. Now, private companies are rushing their technologies to space, and they are not seeing the long-term impact of their technologies. They forget to think proactively about the bigger picture and the potential negative impact like we did in the past with plastic in our oceans. Now, my name is Nick de Streger, and I created a Belgian startup triggered by my two passions, space and artificial intelligence. One piece of the puzzle in making the space industry more sustainable is making them more intelligent by implementing AI inside of satellites, spacecrafts and space stations. There, I said it, AI, artificial intelligence. Now, you might think, oh God, yet another person spitting out the AI buzzword, which I don't know what the hell it means. Now, a lot of people think they don't know what AI is, but it's actually very simple to explain. Artificial intelligence involves using computers to do things that traditionally require human intelligence. This means creating algorithms to find patterns in data. And it also involves acting on data, learning from new data, and improving over time. Now, actually, AI is just like a tiny human child growing up into a smarter human adult. Just like this mom is showing her baby what a cat looks like, also AI is learning in this way. We show an AI algorithm thousands, sometimes millions of examples of what a cat looks like, such that afterwards the AI algorithm can really recognize all sizes, forms and shapes of a cat. Now, sit back, relax, and let me take you on a journey for the next 10 minutes to show you how we can solve some of the problems in the space industry in a sustainable way using AI technology. Now let's start our journey by launching a satellite. Now remember I said sit back and relax, but imagine yourself being a satellite and sitting on top of one of these rumbling beasts. Space rockets are the taxis that take us and our satellites into space. Now rocket engines are designed to endure for about 8 to 10 launches, which costs multiple of millions of dollars. Now imagine spending 50,000 euros on a car, using it a couple of times, like eight times, throwing it away and buying a new one. Well, that's insane, right? Now the life cycle of a rocket engine is very short. To make it more sustainable, we need to extend this lifetime. And we can do this by making the engine self-aware and intelligent, 
so it can decide for itself if it can or cannot endure another launch. And we can do this using an AI algorithm. Now the algorithm can digest all of the engine sensor data and learns how to drive all the actuators, the valves and the pumps of the engine in order to minimize failure and damage during flight. And this can possibly double the lifetime of a rocket engine. All right, so the rocket got us into space, into orbit, and our satellite is deployed, floating around in its intended orbit. Now this satellite is actually intended for Earth observation. It's basically a camera floating around in space and continuously taking pictures from the Earth as it travels at around eight kilometers a second. Now, you might wonder, why do we need a camera in space? Well, it helps us to detect and track hurricanes. But it can also help us in detecting floods and predict how bad they will be. Forest fires is another problem that can be detected in real time using satellites. It also helps us to detect and track ships for logistic reasons and to optimize ship tracking. Now, have you ever wondered how much pictures we actually take from our planet? Well, some of these groups of satellites, they can generate up to 80 terabytes of pictures every single day. Now, 80 terabytes of data, let me put that into perspective for you. One picture on your mobile phone is about 10 megabytes in size. Now this means taking 8 million pictures on your smartphone every single day. Now that data is being downloaded from space into our data centers, where AI algorithms will start to process and digest the 80 terabytes of data. Now this is far from being sustainable as our data centers are using a lot of energy to process all this data. So why not implement these AI algorithms on board of our satellites, such that they can process all of this data in space before sending it down to Earth? In this way, we need to send much less data to Earth, and we can offload the enormous stress on our data centers. It's much more energy efficient to process data locally in space where it's created, then to send it down to Earth for processing. And this way we can make our technology much more sustainable. Now, our journey ends by the disposal of our satellite, which happens as the mission has come to an end. Now, how can we get rid of our satellite and dispose it? Now, you might think, we just send it back to Earth so it can burn up in the atmosphere, right? Now, sadly, in the last 60 years, we just left our satellites into orbit. And now we have the problem of space debris. Imagine buying a car, driving it on the highway, but when you run out of gas, you just leave your car on the highway. You step out of the car, you walk to a nearby car dealer and you buy a new one. But that's completely insane, right? Well, that's exactly what we've been doing in the last 60 years. Now, although the space industry has a lot of innovative, innovative projects, the industry is not yet sure on how to solve this problem. Now, in order to clean up this space debris, is that we need to know where the space debris is. Now, some pieces of this debris are smaller than 10 centimeters in size. And that's like literally trying to find a needle in a haystack. We can solve this by using intelligent AI-based cameras on board of the satellites to track even the smallest amount of tiny pieces of debris, such that in a later stage, they can mitigate it. Now, we need to find a good balance between the profit created by the development of our technologies and the impact on our people, planet and beyond. Now AI can help in solve the current challenges, both in upstream and downstream space tech. 
the sustainable development goals should be used in a proactive way and not in a reactive way like we did with the plastic in our oceans. Hence, we should add a number 18 called clean space.